Welcome to the Got Questions podcast. Occasionally, we like to have a guest on, either with a, a new book that's coming out, a, a new ministry activity that's going on, something we'd like our audience to be aware of. Joining me today is Jason Jimenez. He is the author of Hijacking Jesus and the president and founder of Standing Strong Ministries. So, Jason, welcome to the Got Questions podcast. Thank you for having me. So, Jason, tell us our audience, for those who might, may not be familiar with you, a little bit about you and your background and um, what is Standing Strong Ministries. Well, it really, my background, um, I come from the Tucson, Arizona, originally, and that's where I started my ministry as a young junior high director and it was shortly after i lost my mom she was suddenly taken in a car accident and as anyone can imagine when something like that just really hits you um, it caused me to instead of run away from god it caused me to run to god and it was there that i started to have a lot of a lot more questions a lot more questions surrounding what next you know suffering never blamed god for the tragedy in my family's life but leaned on him to ask him, what are you gonna do through this tragedy? And then that's when I started to pursue uh, deeper questions, essentially, kind of like the platform of Got Questions. You know, I had a lot of them. I wish I had your ministry uh, when I was young, struggling at the time, but the internet, you know, wasn't really in existence at all. And and it was through there, I started to find my passion to study God's word, hit the, the validity, credibility of scripture, started to investigate the resurrection you know, had faith in Jesus Christ as a young man, but really started to grow. And then now through the years, been blessed to be a pastor working with children, students, families, different churches, moved out here to Charlotte, North Carolina, went to seminary under Dr. Norman Geisler at the time. And that's when I started to add to my background from philosophy to theology to apologetics. And then the last 11 years has been traveling the country helping Christians to stand strong, right, in their faith, as the scripture says, uh, because a lot of us have a defeated attitude. A lot of us are not in, emboldened. Uh, we feel very intimidated about issues of today. So my passion is really to try to take a lot of complicated issues and to not just simplify them, but to make them make better sense to the family dynamic and also to come alongside the church and help do three things, essentially, embolden Christians to stand strong no matter the cost, equip them to know what they believe and why they believe it so they can defend in the culture and ultimately engage the culture for Christ. So that's what we've been doing now. And we've been blessed to do it the last 25 years. Mm-hmm. So that, that's excellent. It fits very well. And with got questions, I mean, we're not exclusively an apologetics or worldview related mystery, but obviously a ton of questions we receive have an apologetics component, have a defense of the faith or help people to understand well, where and how they're thinking is off in relationship to how they're approaching God's word, how they're viewing the culture around them, how they're viewing what's going on in the world. It's um, your minister is very helpful can can wholeheartedly highly recommend it. So uh, it's a privilege to have you on today. Um, I know you've written several books and when we publish this episode and we'll have links to your books and standing strong ministries in the show notes and the description on YouTube and at podcast.gotquestions.org, but your new book that's coming out, Hijacking Jesus, what led you to write this book in particular? Yeah, I mean, that that's actually a simple question, but it's a really difficult one to answer because to be honest, it was like, Shay, I was thinking, I mean, seeing internally, even just in my own existence as a father of four Gen Zers, and seeing a lot of the conversations that my kids were having with their friends who are quote unquote Christian, and then you add this level of wokeness and to what degree um, is that unbiblical, right? You know, not just social, not social justice issues. And then you start seeing a altered or a fabricated Jesus that starts becoming centered within the preaching of particular pastors. And then you're looking at it and you're thinking, and this is even pre-COVID, you're looking at a lot of these people who are teaching things that run contrary to what we would say as a historic Orthodox Christian or a biblical Christian, I, I, I refer to us as in the, in, in the book to distinguish us from progressive Christians, seeing how many people are, were taking uh, issue with Jesus being the son of God, the, the second person of the Trinity, you know, saying, oh, we, we need to follow the example of Jesus, right? He was a beautiful, 
person who had this self manifestation of this God consciousness, whatever that is, whether they take a, a new age leaning or more of an inclusive woke uh, leaning towards that interpretation. Or again, uh, some of your listeners probably are aware of the pan antheism, you know, like God is in the world as the world is in God. And the more I started to investigate this and looking at quote unquote credible, his, you know, conservative churches, I'm seeing this buy into a progressive movement and really hijacking Jesus um, in a church that many people believe if they go on their website and say, oh, the, well, their, their statement of faith is, you know, is orthodox. It's, it's biblically sound, but they're really not preaching it from the pulpit. And that started to disturb me. And when I look at scripture, I see that most of the New Testament is dealing with false doctrine. And sadly, as you and I know, in the day we're living where a lot of people are biblically illiterate. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, no fault to their own sometimes, right? But there's just this massive uh, population of ignorance uh, to what the Bible teaches and who Jesus Christ really is. I felt I needed to do something, not just for my kids' generation, but also as a pastor and an apologist saying we have to defend uh, the, the, the person and the two natures of who Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man, because progressive Christianity, of course, then I started to read a bunch of books on this for the last few years and nothing's new under the sun. It's just like, you know, kind of a new way of introducing these issues, new faces, but seeing how prevalent it's becoming in these conservative denominations where liberalism at the time, right? they were going mainline. So they were starting their own churches where progressive Christianity, they're trying to take over the existing congregations and churches that have, however long they've been in existence, have been teaching that the Trinity is right, is an essential uh, doctrine and that Jesus Christ is the second person is only through him, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that one can be saved. They put their faith and trust in that and seeing how people are hijacking that very message. So that's why I wanted to write this book to help people who are now being caught up in this elusiveness of progressive Christianity to understand the false teaching behind it. But then also, Shay, recognizing the people that are confused or have family members and are having these debates, because in all my travels, that's what we're now talking about. And, and wanted to give them material of how to properly, historically, biblically, theologically, and spiritually respond to certain things where they're hijacking Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you, you described progressive Christianity as elusive, and I think that's an excellent way of putting it. But so I'm going to try to nail you down here. Um, give me a definition for what is progressive Christianity. Yeah, so this is another thing that is very difficult. And I've talked to a lot of people who've been investigating progressive Christianity for quite some time. Obviously, bear in mind when you're going to give a definition, a lot of it is going to be in line with liberal theology, right? Mm -hmm. Liberal beliefs uh, to some extent. But they really have other essentials that they hold on to. But as we do kind of give a working definition, we have to understand that when you're dealing with postmodern thought, that is, that is grounded within progressivism and Christianity, um, you can't nail them absolutely, if you will. They don't like these particular beliefs, right, in, in air quotes. They try to stay away from them. So I want the audience to understand that because I'm, I don't want to speak for progressive Christians. But in giving a working definition, as I do, I call it the, uh, a new theology on the block is in the chapter when I talk about what progressive Christianity really is. But before I do that, I, I, I wanna, wanna say this. I have an image in the book. I want people to visualize if they can, if they're watching or listening. And what I first show is this is biblical Christianity. Okay, so let's, let's understand this first, this will help. We have six doctrines, if you will, centered on Jesus, the person of who Jesus is. We believe absolutely without compromise that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man. We believe, number two, that Jesus Christ was virgin born, God incarnate, was virgin born through the Holy Spirit. Number three, doctor, doctrine according to you know the teachings of Jesus we see in scripture that, that makes the foundation of what historic Orthodox Christianity is. We believe that he performed miracles, right? Um, that not only were fulfilled with prophecy, but also confirming that he was the son of God. Number four, we believe in the atonement of Jesus, that he died on the cross uh, for our sins. 
um, according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Number five, we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? And ultimately, his second return. Now, progressive Christianity, not all progressive Christians, but progressive Christianity denies, they reject all six of those. Mm -hmm. I think that's important, Shay, for us to understand that first and foremost, so that when we then start defining, okay, well, if they deny and reject those, it isn't Christianity. So we can't be fooled with this term progressive to make it seem like they have something new because that's what they try to, that was the other thing, why I wrote this book. The nuances, the way they play the game, how they fool and deceive people, which again, Satan is the father of lies. He's the great deceiver. And they're pretending like we've removed all the lacquer Right. All of all of the veneer, you know, with lacquer that we've removed from Jesus, the rigidity of all these doctrines and literalism has damaged us. Right. And all this orthodoxy stuff, we know we need to be about orthopraxy. So when progressive Christianity starts defining themselves, they say that truth is not relative. The Bible is to be taken metaphorical. We don't hold to a God who is imminent or transcendent, but a God who is within that's where that panentheism comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, Roger uh, Wosley has a book, Kissing Fish, and he probably has the best description where most progressive Christians hold to at least 80 to 100% of what he says in his book about what progressive Christianity really is. And that's what he teaches. He teaches that truth is relative, um, that Jesus was inclusive, that uh, same-sex marriage is not a sin, that they hold to LGBT movements as they believe Jesus did. Um, people who hold to the Bible to be literal are actually presenting Jesus in a falsehood. So we're actually, the, you know, they would say that Paul was the original hijacker. Jesus never intended to, for us to, to worship him as God. So that in a sense is progressive Christianity. They really want to make sure they tie in the social justice as the kingdom of God, i.e. as the gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's how they uh, will refer to themselves. And if you go to progressivechristianity.org, they have more or less what they would refer to as like an eightfold path. Tenants that they subscribe to uh, for the majority to kind of give guidance to somebody who would say they're progressive Christian. But then at the end of the day, and in his book, The Shift uh, by Colby Martin, he's saying how, you, how he left conservatism to progressivism he says, I'm not trying to give you a roadmap because everyone's journey is their own. And so, again, at the heart of progressive Christianity, though they deny those fundamental teachings about Jesus, right? And then they affirm inclusivity, LGBT, uh, truth is relative, the Bible is to be taken metaphorical, they're anti-supernaturalists. They will say all of our experiences of God, self-consciousness or self-manifestation is a collective that we're all merging to the oneness and that's a huge belief system that's advanced through social justice that progressive christianity teaches yeah. uh, kind of how i introduced that question trying to define progressive christianity it's kind of like trying to jail trying to <laughs> nail jello to the wall and that <laughs> there's no so much freedom within the umbrella of progressive christianity that you can perfectly understand what one progressive Christian believes and the next one will, I don't believe any of that stuff. I believe this. So it's, it's, it's not something you can universally d define. Like if you say someone, this person is a Calvinist. Well, okay. You, then you definitely know some things that person believes not so with this. Um, in my experience, the type of questions we receive the whole concept of like, well, my Jesus in air quotes, would never say something like that. I would never do something. I would never want something like that. that's sort of how I have defined it when describing to people because it, it's very subjective. It is you basically get to determine which teachings of Jesus or the Bible that you accept. You become Lord over the Bible rather than God's word being something you your, submit yourself to. It's it's and essentially making yourself God because you're the one who gets to determine what is true for you and to varying degrees to others, even though they would deny that. And yet they're very quick to deny certain things that people say while also saying that all truth is relative. So it's, it's a big subjective <laughs> postmodern mess 
that when you really try to dig into it, it becomes confusing and distracting and can definitely lead people astray. And you, once you're there, you don't even really know, how did I even get on this road? And so that's what makes it so hard to nail down. Yeah. And that's, and, and to your point, this is devastating to a lot of families because I can't tell you how many times now, even when I was writing the book, I would teach on hijacking Jesus as I was writing it to get people's responses. And that's the whole thing is you can't nail down some of these things. That's why I start with what they reject first to distinguish between what we as biblical Christians believe that, that holds to the historical nature, right? And evolution of Christianity without compromise from the beginning. And I think that's so important, Shay, because part of the of the blindness or the ignorance that takes place or lack of defense is people's inability, not just to the elusiveness of progressive Christianity, but also their inability to articulate certain doctrines that is Christianity. And you and I know from guys like Dr. Michael Green, uh, Alistair McGrath, when you study their theology, they would say, when, when we articulate the historic Christian faith, it's the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So for me, because there's so much confusion on other issues, I said, no, how, if you reject those six doctrines, the divinity of Jesus, his virgin birth, his miracles, you think about this, and his death, resurrection, and second coming, that's not Christianity. Mm -hmm. And so often when you have these conversations, because like you said, it's trying to nail jelly on the wall, people give them a pass and say, well, they feel more free to this inclusive Jesus, this all loving Jesus. And that's where a lot of the debate has headed. And so you have a lot of these people who've surfaced in the church for quite some time and people have not really addressed it. And that's why, um, even though you can't, like you said, 100% say this is what progressive Christians believe, and I respect that. I'm not trying to speak for them or speak down to them, mm -hmm. but I am defending what the Bible teaches, and that's where we need to start. And then through that, like you said, through this relativistic, postmodernistic, panentheistic understanding through progressive Christianity, through that lens, you will see that this is a false religion. Mm -hmm. It's it's not Christianity at all. No, it's um, it's the only thing about Christ that's in it is essentially. Most would say, I love the teachings of Christ. I love the Sermon on the Mount. I love the Gospels up and once you get past the birth narrative, and before you get to the death and resurrection, everything in between, that's the Jesus I know and love. But they're rejecting His person who he says he is and only embracing his teachings, which is not, and it's not the definition of Christianity for sure. It's not historical biblical Christianity. It doesn't save by any stretch of the definition. It doesn't fit the rest of the new Testament. And in the parts of your book that probably impacted me the most that I've had the opportunity to read and really think through, it's their whole view of the Bible that impacts it. But it's obviously the only place we, there's supernatural revelation is only available um, in an inerr inerrant form in God's word. And once you deny the inerrancy of scripture or the authority of scripture or the inspiration of scripture, everything else becomes subjective. Um, you can choose to accept parts of the Old Testament, parts of the New. You get to pick and choose what you believe. And that's what they're doing with Jesus and only accepting his word, sort of like a, a red letter Bible. It's like, I'm, I only believe in the words that Jesus said, minus these you could go hold Jesus seminar. And I don't really believe Jesus even said this and this. I only think he said this is you become as you're the judge of scripture. You're the one who determines which books belong to the Bible, which words belong in the Bible, which ones you're going to submit to. And your understanding can be completely different from the next guy. And that's, what's, most frustrating in conversations I've had with progressive Christians is there's no objective standard by which to have a conversation with them. If they're making themselves the judge of scripture, it's like, I don't, I don't even know where to go. So with that said, in your experience, someone is seeking to point a progressive Christian towards the Lord Jesus Christ in his, his deity, his death, his resurrection, his second coming, who he truly is, 
what he truly did, what he truly taught. What is the best way, best way to point them towards the, the one true Christ? Yeah, that's a powerful question. And I really appreciate it because I, I do think what's happened is that people, they get into arguments and they're really not pointing people to the real Jesus, if you will. Yeah. You know, one of the best things in it, in a, you know, comes from a previous book I wrote called Challenging Conversations and trying to teach people to be an advocator of God's truth. You know, typically, sadly, what we've seen in our culture today is we have the aggressor and that gets all the noise and all the press. And again, it's a, it's a small majority within the Christian faith, right? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that small number becomes the majority voice in the tactics and the attitude. Well, it's unchristian. We're to, we're to speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15. And so we don't want to be the avoider. So when they when it does come up, when you have a progressive Christian who's like giving pushback and denying the very divinity of Jesus and rejecting the gospel of John completely and metaphorically interpreting everything else because they haven't answered everything. I want people to understand that. So when you are talking to a progressive Christian, like you said, it will vary. Depends on their views, depends on their influence comes from David Gushy or if it comes from Brian Zahn, you know, somebody maybe is lighter toned in the progressive Christian faith versus somebody who's a lot more uh, engaged like Peter Eanes or Brian McLaren. So people got to keep that in mind. But at the heart of it, when somebody is saying, hey, Jesus to me, so for example, and this will be helpful, I didn't feel like it was enough to help Christians like here's what we believe, you know. Uh, historically, biblically, theologically, and spiritually about those six doctrines that we mentioned centered on Jesus, the person of Jesus. But I also then say, okay, well, if progressive Christians for the most part reject those, then who is Jesus to them? Well, it really is three false portrayals. So if, let's say you're, you're talking to a progressive Christian who believes that Jesus was more of a mystic. Well, one of the biggest things you want to do in that case to point them back to the real Jesus is where did Jesus ever talk about this self-consciousness, this self-awareness? Where do you interpret that in scripture, right? And if they're saying, well, you know, we have that in the Gospel of Thomas. He said, well, Gospel of Thomas was clearly written after the canonical Gospels. And if you're going to look at a reliable source and you're going to reject the canonical Gospels, that's being inconsistent historically. So it's okay for people to make mention of that to show that the source that we have actually John is a lot more credible than looking at the gospel of Thomas that contradicts uh, the majority of what we see in the synoptic gospels. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, you, you want to show them that the language that a mystic tries to use does not align to the actual teachings of a monotheistic Jew who was fulfilling prophecy. Now, the other false narrative that you will see uh, quite often now from a progressive Christian is a second category. And in, the, so in that second category, let's say you're talking to a progressive Christian who believes that he was a woke teacher. What they don't like to do is they don't like to actually look at the teachings of Jesus. They like the Sermon on the Mount Jesus, but they don't like the Mark 7 Jesus who's actually calling out sin that defiles the heart. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I actually do with these progressive Christians and because I want to, it's not just catching them in a lie. This is not a game. This is about a, someone's soul and somebody's advancing a, a false view or narrative of Jesus. And it is our responsibility and duty to love that person, speak the truth and love, but defend the gospel like but we see Paul the Apostle do. So when, when somebody's using Jesus as a woke teacher, I then consistently show them actual teachings of Jesus. And then when they're picking and choosing, that's where you can start narrowing in saying, it's interesting how you pick and choose Jesus. And that becomes the bobblehead Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you actually are, again, you're falsely interpreting what you're seeing in scripture, right? You're downplaying or downgrading certain passages uh, and you're uplifting in your, you know, your improper hermeneutics, you know, the eisegesis. So I, when they use the Sermon on the Mount, I say, okay, well, let's use Matthew 5 through 7, and let's actually go through Matthew 5 through 7 instead of just judge not, at least you be judged, and, you know, love your enemies kind of thing, right? Um, so that's a helpful thing to do is just all they have to do is stick to the actual teaching of Jesus canonically. And then the last one is the revolutionist. And this, this is the biggest false, false betrayal, I should say, of Jesus in academia. You know, he was just an insurrectionist, right? He was trying to reform Judaism. Uh, it failed. 
He was captured. He was he was publicly humiliated. It, it left the disciples absolutely defeated, and so they felt like they had to do something about this. Hence, they started a religion known as Christianity. And so, those are the original hijackers. You know, people like James to Paul and the rest of the disciples. That's what the progressive Christians say today. You know, the Paula Fredricksons of the world, the Brian McLarens of the world. You know, the people I mentioned before,、uh, Brian Zons. Um, and that one then is, if you actually look at the teachings of Jesus, you don't see Jesus advancing、uh, a revolution. In John six, when they're trying to force him to become king, what does Jesus do? He doesn't receive the power; he runs from it.、Mm-hmm. Right? When James and John want to strike lightning and judge and do, Jesus said no, and he says, "He who fights with the sword will die by the sword."、Uh, when a man came to him and says, "Tell my brother." To divide the portion, right? You know, my fair share. I want my fair share. That's socialistic. Jesus denied that. He did not accept that. And on and on we go. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Render to God what is God's. So they try to make Jesus out to be this insurrectionist, this rebel, this revolutionist, this guy with socialistic leanings, and that is a false betrayal. And we as Christians have enough evidence in the canonical Gospels that are reliable sources that are early and abundant. Uh, in their coherence, that in the cooperation of them, and with eyewitnesses' accounts, that we can defend those things with great fervor, and that I think is the biggest thing. Shay is that a lot of Christians don't know that they kind of, when they say, "Oh, you can't、um, interpret that that way," it's just metaphorically speaking, and then that's it. It's the end of the debate. So I encourage Christians to study the actual teachings of Jesus, because clearly the progressive Christians who have read Jesus take him out of context.、Mm-hmm. And if we let them, this now becomes the the interpretation now of the text. And so, if you take all three of those false portrayals of Jesus—the mystic, the in- inclusive teacher, and the insurrectionist or the revolutionist—that is the majority view combined now in America.、Yeah. And so, if Christians just clearly look at the the teachings of Jesus and somebody saying, "Oh, this is what Jesus meant," or Jesus never said that. Uh, we can challenge them with multiple attestation that that is not the case.、Mm-hmm. So again, it just depends on the progressive Christian and what their their specific view of Jesus is to help really direct them to have that discussion. Yeah, well, that's well said. The pointing people towards、um, Jesus rather than focusing on、um, hypocrisy, like what you said earlier, and people's souls are at stake in this conversation. Um, winning an argument is not the goal, right? And winning an,、uh, winning the argument will turn people away more than it will attract people. And、um, most people in apologetics love First Peter three fifteen. Always be ready to give an answer for the reason that you hope that you have, but they forget the second part: the do this with gentleness and respect. That、um, can if you win a battle but lose the war, and the war is for people's souls.、And, I detect that heart throughout your book, and even hearing you today, I can tell your passion is to actually reach people, not just to win arguments. So I, I commend you wholeheartedly for that. For again, this is the Got Questions podcast with Jason Jimenez, the author of、um, Hijacking Jesus. Highly recommend the book、um, for anyone who's curious about what progressive Christianity is, or has a friend or loved one who's in that movement that they want to try to understand and reach. Excellent book. I'm highly recommended. But Jason, before we close, me this last question: What is the best way for someone to learn more about you and and your ministry、um, based on what they've heard from you today? Well, one, thank you for this opportunity. Love,、uh, got questions. Love the ministry.、Uh, I've used it for years as a pastor, apologist,、um, as many people have, and my family enjoys it. So, thank you for that work and、mm-hmm. and and what an opportunity it is to partner together to help equip Christians to know. Not just what our faith believes,、uh, and 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 to defend it at all costs in in love and and grace and truth, but also to help those people, like you said, who are misguided and are falling prey to progressive Christianity. So if, yeah, if people are interested to know more about what we do to come alongside the family and the church. They can go to our main website, which is StandStrongMinistries dot org. Or they can look me up, Jason Hammond, as apologist, and they can get all the various different books that we have put out. Um, but we're excited about this book, Shay, that's coming out that is really addressing、um, an issue that is, and again, when when 
when you think of the greatest hijacking that took place in, in, in September 11th of 2001, and again, I'm not equating um, progressive Christians as those terrorists. What I'm saying is when you have a, um, a property or a territory, right, uh, and it's under a certain rule or influence, and you have a movement or an ideology that is intentionally trying to infiltrate itself, that is a hijacking. Especially if it's if it's threatening the very existence and sustainability of something, and so this is this is this is ruining families, and and there's a lot of arguing that is going on in homes, and I could not stand idly by and not do anything about this. And one is I love Jesus, I love our Christian faith, the hope that you and I have, which is a living hope, the blessed hope that we have one day He will return, and we have a responsibility. And when I had so many people come and say, where's a good resource? Obviously there's great resources out there, but I didn't see a resource like hijacking Jesus that put it in perspective of number one, how did we get here? How did this all start, right? And see the movement of Satan through the years. That is number two led to these hijackings of Jesus and denying from his divinity to his second coming. But then thirdly, let's look at the false portrayals of who they make Jesus out to be as though it's like the liberating one. And I wanted to address those things in those three areas. And so uh, the book will be out soon and people can get the book anywhere where they get books, anywhere they're sold. And, and I encourage people to do that and to share it and get the word out. So thank you for your support and helping us do just that. Yeah. Again, the, the book is Hijacking Jesus. It's an excellent book. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I highly recommend it. And I learned some some things from it in the sense of understanding the movement, its origins, and what they're really going for. What's their what's their end game in the sense of what they're even trying to do, whether intentionally or unintentionally, is they're attempting to hijack the Christian faith, creating the both Jesus and the faith in their own image rather than in the image of Christ. So Jason, thank you for joining me today. I true, thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. And again, we'll include links to where you, you can learn more about Stand Strong Ministries, Jason Jimenez and um, Hijacking Jesus in the, the show notes on the description on YouTube and also at podcast.gotquestions.org. This has been the Got Questions podcast with Jason Jimenez, author of Hijacking Jesus. Got questions, Bible has answers, and we'll help you find them.